tonight with none other than Meadowhawk and Master Pupil. Welcome, gentlemen. So, Meadowhawk, my first question straight to you. Uh, during the last broadcast, when it was 07 versus Deja Vu, I did hear one of your members say that this match is going to give us PTSD. I just want to know if you uh, if you guys have recovered for that and if you're ready for uh, your opponent of Eclipse. Uh, I think we are. I mean, Exo is a bit eccentric. He likes to uh, <laughs> speak his speak his mind, so 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 to say. Um, but it was like like you said, it was an incredible series. Uh, it went back and forth. Um, you know, we let them get back into things after making some mistakes, but didn't fully collapse. And it was really exciting to you know even watch on the stream when I was watching. Yeah, that was one of the best series I think we've seen, honestly, the entire Gold League season. Yep. So, Master People, we're gonna talk in hypotheticals for a minute. Say one player from your team just randomly disappeared right right here and now. Who's the biggest loss for you? Let's see, that that's really hard, man. That's really hard. Um I think draw He wants to say himself, just, but he can't. Just, <laughs> yeah, I, I really do. I really do. Um I'm gonna have to say draw because um you always need that one guy to bully for uh, doing some funny things. And in Poland, uh, he got beat up by his, his door, um, the door to his his room. He went to walk in, and basically the door surprised him, hit him right in the <laughs> face. So we need that we need that kind of guy on the team. So Fair enough. That's why Drog's there. All right, we so, need him. So next up, is uh, there was some friendly banter between a couple of members of each of your teams over the last couple of days over uh, who is the boost They're master. <laughs> So, so Meadowhawk, what do you have to say to that? Exo feels that uh, he's the boost master, but uh, Vetro feels differently. So, what do you say? Well, well, Exo is the boost master. I mean, like to put it in terms, he is the one true bot. I mean, Vetro is kind of like Morpheus. He discovered him. He unlocked his abilities. But <laughs> since then, it's it's all Exo. He's the one true bot. Master people response. I don't know. I think Vetro's up there. I mean. You got Exo who can do the boosts, right? So you got you got one spectrum of it, but you also got Vetro who can come up and do the damage afterwards, right? So like Vetro can do the boosts mediocre, but Exo can only get damaged like in a mediocre way. So you know it kind of balances out there. Interesting. Fair enough. All right. Well, any final thoughts for your opponent tonight, Meadowhawk? Oh, it should be another good tight match. I mean, we took him to overtime last time, so I'm hoping that they're still on tilt from last week and. We'll take advantage of it. All right. And Master Pupil, although you aren't wearing your beanie today, it's throwing me off. Any final thoughts for me? I am ice cold, man. <laughs> <laughs> it is cold in here. Um, but, yeah, I think Vetro's going to take the title tonight uh, as Master Booster, and uh, I think that's it'll, uh, that'll be the way it goes. All right, gentlemen. Basically, it's night. <laughs> well, get ready to fire up your tanks. We're going to get right into the battle. Uh, great face-off from both uh, both captains, or, or face-off captains, we'll call them, because we always see Meadowhawk and Master Pupil for their teams respectively. But i got to say, what are the predictions for you here? you got to favor Eclipse going into this. I think a majority of the polls are going to point that way. Sure. I'm going to go with 5-2 uh, in favor of Eclipse. 5-2. It's, it's going to be hard to argue that, because I, I, I do agree with you, but I really really want to give it to 07 in just a way that I'm hoping they can pull something together tonight, something different, uh, and really give it to the team of Eclipse. I mean, and we've seen Eclipse make mistakes before, especially with High. I mean, what was that? And, and multiple times now, I think you've yeah. mind, is uh, multiple times when 07 has played the offline matches, so both versus Apex and Eclipse, they've been extremely long and close matches. Uh, they took Apex to overtime, and that gave them a very needed point in the first round, Robin. And then recently, they played Eclipse, and it was 3-3 three to three going into the last map, and they ended up losing and losing 5-3, to three, but they, they kept it very close right up until the last moment. That being said, that was right. the off-broadcast match, so we'll have to see if they can do it live and uh, see what happens. I, I, right, and I agree with you that it's in Eclipse's favor. I don't even necessarily disagree your score, but optimistically, I'm going to give it to 07 and say I hope they win in an overtime victory. Yep. Another thing to look at is the first map played tonight is Proak, which is one of Eclipse's most played maps in one of the maps where they only have two losses on the whole season. That is correct. And 07 being a little shaky. Yeah, 07, this is one of their worst maps that they've actually played. Now, they have Ghost Town, which, fun fact for you, 07 hasn't played Ghost Town once this season. <laughs> They, they have avoided it. My at prediction all costs. is not looking too well, but we'll have to see as we get into the very first map between 07 and Eclipse.
Kafka, one of the first maps in the game. Teams start at the regular spawn points as they do in standard battles. Bases are separated from each other by the railway, so the defending team has to choose whether to send their vehicles to the left side, playing them in the centre, or to the right of the railway, occupying the hill and a part of the village. The attacking team usually attacks the first base. However, the teams often go for face-to-face -face confrontation, seven-on-seven, -seven, in the hilly terrain at the centre. That's why both teams frequently use vehicles with good gun depression angles and sturdy turrets. And here we go, the very first map and series of the night. It's going to be 07 versus Eclipse. Starting it off lineup-wise, it's going to be a 113 and IS-7 and STB, two bat chats, a grill and a T-54 lightweight for 07. And then, of course, moving on to the side of Eclipse. Yeah, Eclipse coming in here with a 113 and STB, a 143 bat chats, and an RU-251. Uh, Wallhack still holding on to that uh, RU-251 slot. And uh, Ox playing the token heavy tank. Meanwhile, Wallhawks wow, actually taking some early damage. Yeah, and these camos, uh, just so you know, uh, unfortunately are backwards. <laughs> but we Let's will fix see. that for you coming next game. Apologies. Uh, James messed up. Didn't you, James? <laughs> actually, I don't think it was me this it time, wasn't. but that's besides the point. Uh, looking at it here, this really awkward push out of, out of Eclipse. They, they've kind of left their bat shots in the low ground towards the 8-9 line. Uh, however... Ox, more Tigers all over on the five line, separated. And 07 are just going up and over right towards these bat chats. Oh my goodness, and look at the damage already coming onto Letif as he finds himself taking about half of his HP. And Zone Delta is also taking quite a bit of damage. T1 Diabetic getting pushed below half HP as well. Very early brawls coming out from both teams as Zone Delta is taken out completely. The early pick in favor of Eclipse, however, damage is staying relatively close, so 07 can still get back into this. Warbender is now being focused out by Mort as well as Ox Maxis, and he's gonna go Ox Mathis, and he's gonna go down. Exo, meanwhile, picking off T1 Diabetic in that grill. And Letif is actually Letif. just gonna go up and over. He's looking to go right over while Mort is taking out rocks. Letif and Exo now in front of Brent, good position. Letif firing off shots onto Vetro. That's gonna be a dead bat chat. And this is just going all over the place, back and forth, but Eclipse finds themselves on the better end of this exchange. And as I say that, Makos finds Brett. They've evened it up, four to four, both tier eight still alive. However, you have to favor the position of Eclipse right now. They are holding the high ground. Uh, but the thing to keep an eye on is actually Fosta is coming in from behind. Oh, an XO, that would have been a huge shot for him to land onto Mort. And now Wallhacks and Mort are pushing his position. They are going to get free shots, and they should take him down before he's reloaded. Oh, Ox Mathis! <laughs> he's going to go down on top. May have actually threw his tank away. Oh, seven or... Yeah, Letif could potentially take out the tank of Mort, but no, he doesn't get the shot off in time. And now it's just down to this lone little tier 8 light of the T-54 to finish it off. And he's not going to do it. It would have been a miracle to see him do that. Yeah, so overall, I, I'm not a big fan out of that play from 07. Uh, they, they kind of pushed around and they, they hesitated, and so they sat there and traded over that burn, played quarter games with bat chats, even though they had the numerical advantage, and, and they gave up the only opportunity they really had to close that series out. As soon as Eclipse recognized that they were in a situation where some of their tanks were being overmatched, they triggered the other push, they came sure. around, and they, they picked up their own overmatch. Uh, and so at that point, it becomes a race between who can clean up their little brawl first and free up the extra gun to go help the other group. Right. And what happened was they committed around. They tried to uh, keep those guys pinned in the low ground. Once Eclipse realized, like, all right, we're in a bad situation, uh, Ox and Tigers and them pushed over on the other side. They found the isolated tanks of 07, and they got them down first. Right, and and then all of a sudden, it's Letif, and the others just left in a riverbed where mm. they're in the low ground. They can't really do anything. You can't move fast in water. You can't get out of that riverbed easily. Uh, and it just wasn't a good situation for 07 in the long run. Oh, I agree with you. Although I will say this for 07, uh, they were doing a good job of staying in that fight, uh, given the position that they had um, you know, put themselves in. And they were fighting back and keeping the damage even for the most part. But again, Eclipse able to capitalize on the better positioning as well as being on the high ground. And it just wasn't a good look for 07. 
Yeah, and one thing I noticed a lot of these teams have been doing lately is even though they have an overmatch, um, they're real hesitant to fully commit to a brawl and to push around yeah. even with those auto loaders because they're all those auto loaders. They they tend to they can pump out a lot of damage, and so they try to slow it down because they don't want to give up that HP. And sometimes you need those brawls to be over quick. You need to get on your second clips quickly, and you free up your guns, and that means that you know you need to go in. Some sure. of you are going to lose some HP, but you got to make those trades. Well, looking at the damage here for these teams. Let if I mean for 07 doing 3100. That's not bad. In fact, he was the highest damaging a player uh, of of that map. Yeah, and, and so what if you know his first match for the team? Remember, he just came over from Get Flanked, just joined sure. this roster, and he uh, did a good bit of damage for him there. And we're already going to be heading into the second round here on yep. Prokhorovka, and the teams are going to be switched sides. The camos should be fixed. And we'll yes, have to see if 07 can really uh, clean this up. And bringing it in for 07, it's going to be three bat chats, two SDBs, an IS-7, and a tier 54 lightweight. Eclipse bringing a 113, four bat chats, a leopard, and a 251. Interesting tank choice there out of uh, Brett from Eclipse. It's going to be Brett, yeah. Uh, Leopard, very accurate gun, uh, very hard hitting. Uh, its DPM is rather low, though. Uh, I do like the tank a lot personally. Uh, it's very quick, consistent fire. Uh, great, great pub tank. It doesn't get used a lot in competitive play for a variety of reasons, mainly being just the overall low DPM. So we'll have to see if he can make that work. And actually, a bit of an opening push coming out of uh, 07. So, what do you think 07 needs to do here, James, in order to, to clean it up against? Eclipse, especially now that 07 is on defense. The the key to this map a lot of the times, especially on defense, is making sure that you really put a stake in one side of the map uh, and you don't give it up too easily. So right now they're set up hard uh, towards the west. They need to make sure that they hold this and then they need to make sure it's clear once the other team commits over to their side. Now there's these two tanks in the south, uh, Mort and Vetro. They need to make sure that there is nothing there and they need to make sure that they leave and that they have full control of that regardless. If you can pin a team over across the sixth line and you can put all your guns there without worrying about anything rotating along the sides, you can get resets for days on that two cap and you can really kind of box them in and not give them a lot of options. Uh, and so as long as you can do that, you're fine. Now the thing is, is you need to make sure that, that south end does get clear, that they are legitimately boxed in and they can't get out without you seeing them. If they can rotate out through the south without you having any sort of intel or knowing they're there, you can find yourself as a defender in a very awkward situation where you're surrounded and it really just gives up map control to the other team. All right, well, we'll have to see if 07 are able to do that. As like you said, Eclipse, uh, not known for losing on this map too often. Yeah, they only have two losses on the whole season, and their thing to keep an eye on here is they actually have Exo pushed up in the high ground, not quite a boost, so I'm not going to count that one, but he is... Uh, <laughs> I see what you did there. He is sitting up there at A0, uh, and they, he's just staying in a bush, kind of passive, and they have Fosta poking up and over... Uh, at B6, and so what essentially they're trying to do is just confuse Eclipse. They're, he's gonna, Foss is going to light up and try to light some of these tanks early on, and he's going to make them think that, all right, these are where all, you know, this is what's lighting us, so we just have to worry about this, and they, they kind of just forget that this is even a position that Exo's in. Uh, and uh, so it should work in the long run, and uh, Exo can get free resets essentially from there uh, when they need it, and they'll have free lights. The other thing to keep in mind is Batchat versus a Leopard. As long as the Batchat has a full clip, that Batchat should win that brawl every single time unless they're playing at range. Range is the only saving grace that Leopard will have because he doesn't have to worry about being clipped out. And he has the more accurate gun than that Batchat. That Batchat gun doesn't like to behave a lot. and can kind of be hard to handle. And so range is the Leopard's only saving grace in a 1v1 versus these Batchats. So that's okay. another thing to keep an eye on. And Zone Delta was firing off shots trying to pin anything on Ox Mathis. Unfortunately not connecting anything and I am struggling with Ox Mathis's name tonight. Yeah, and it's not even a difficult name to say. Save me, James. I caught your bug. Last uh, last week you could not speak and <laughs> now it's my turn. Yep, and looking at it, they still have, they have no idea that X is up here. They haven't committed anyone to even go find him. And Ox just keeps po poking up and over and keeps getting lit yeah. and he can't figure out where it's going from. Now, another thing to keep an eye on here is they, they, Exo needs oh, to be... Oh, nice the, shot. Yeah, so they should. And the push is actually going to come out here, and they're going to dump over into the sixth line. This is what I was talking about. 
if they make some sort of rotate through the south to reopen up this map, you need to know it's coming. Eclipse kind of took the lazy way. They took the lay where they're guaranteed going to be spotted. However, they've opened up these they've angles. Up quite a and lot of angles, yeah. Going to really be able to pump out a lot of damage onto these guns. Whoa, Mike. Of 07. Mike Baco's finding his shot, though, and cleaning up a tank. Mort is going to clean up rocks. But the HP deficit is clearly in the lead for 07. Overall, a lot of good timing there out of uh, 07. They were set up very well. Exo just dumped his clip and got off a lot of free damage. Now, Warbander is going to go down here, but not without a fight. He's going to take out Tigers, and Vetro is going to find Fosta. Warbender's still alive here. He still can do some damage, and he's going to pump off another shot. Yeah, and this I-7 bringing the consistent fire. These Batchats all have to run away right now. Uh, they're reloading, and the only thing left alive with any HP is the Leopard 1 for Eclipse. However, they're down by HP by about uh, 2,300 right now. So this isn't looking too bad for 07 at all. And Brett actually found some shots onto Exo as he approached. Uh, so now it's up to 07 to really close this series out. They're doing exactly what I was talking about as far as making sure they're pinning Eclipse right, into the south right. end of the map right now. And they should find wall hacks here in a moment. Uh, and they will find him, and he should get picked off here in a moment. So Delta is trying to get the chase on Wall. Wallhax did fire off a shot, and he missed twice now, putting one into the dirt. He's in a poor position. A zone Delta finally takes a little bit of damage. Vetro just trying to pump out what shots he can. And Wallhax is just being herded to his death. And he's dodging. Oh, he's bobbing and weaving. And he finally oh. goes down. <laughs> I respect the fight out of that man, though. Yeah. Really try to make it out of there. He's doing what he could to stay alive, but uh, just too many guns left alive for 07 and ultimately just caught him. And now it's just down to Vetro and Brett. Brett and the full health Leopard 1 uh, sitting up on the hill still, and Vetro is in the middle of a reload. Overall, I, I really like the opening positioning out of 07. Uh, they made it very hard for Eclipse to get a read on him. And the second that Eclipse tried to make some sort of play, uh, they were in position to punish it. They, they understood that being overmatched on that six line uh, or opened up like that was a risk. And so they left those tanks uh, up at A3. And so when they committed over trying to pick off uh, those STBs, the Bat Chats were ready to just open up. And they, they got an insane HP lead between those two Bat Chats uh, and the Bat Chat of Exo up on the hill. When that happened, he uh, was able to shoot some of those tanks in the back and, and got more free damage there. So overall, just a very good opening play and positioning out of 07 that should you'd have to imagine, tie the series up one-to-one. -one. Right, and that's the thing that I was alluding to earlier. We've really seen 07 do some incredible things and play very intelligently, and then we've also seen them drop the ball uh, quite drastically on the other end of the spectrum. So I, I like this out of 07. I, I agree that they really should clean this up unless something catastrophic happens on their end because really this is their game to lose. As I say that, Brett is going to clean up EXO, but even still, I mean, this could be a sign of a very strong series for 07. Yep, and if the one thing to look there at the bottom of the screen is uh, Brett actually choosing to not run a med kit. He's running rations instead. Uh, and that Leopard is known to be essentially a glass cannon. Uh, it's known to be ammo racked pretty much every time it gets shot wow. uh, or have his ammo rack damaged. So a lot of players send off for uh, multiple repair kits, a small and large. Uh, however, opting to run rations and a fire extinguisher. Uh, not a pick or a setup that you really see on a Leopard a whole lot. Warbender is finding shots with an IF-7. And, and something to note is that that I-7 actually survived. We saw Warbender outnumbered in a 3-1 to one, uh, position, but he made it out with the help of his teammates. Well, the thing was is he was on the low ground and in an I-7 oh, yeah, shooting with the Batchos trying to shoot down. They didn't have easy shots in his lower plate, uh, and because of the angles they are shooting at him, it was not easy pens, and so they decided to try to shoot the STBs instead, shoot the tanks that they had the guaranteed right. shots on and they could take down. And so he was able to stay in their face and fire off a lot of shots. And I would not be surprised to see him do a good bit of damage this game. And here's the problem now for Eclipse. One minute and 45 seconds, and they are the attacking team. Vetro. Vetro, really? Now here's the thing is Letif is full HP, so he can go shot for shot with Vetro and come out on top. So we'll have to see if he chooses to, to take that brawl right now. And Vetro is lit, meaning that the entire other team of 07 can can spot him. They know exactly where he is and where he's going. And Ledif opening up the so shots. Delta gets... doesn't even need to pop over. 
It is now just up to Brett, and he is going to go down momentarily. So, 07, tying it up on a map that Eclipse is heavily favored. Yeah, definitely. So, kind of an interesting uh, round there. Uh, overall, a lot of that just comes down to 07's just initial setup, though. They, they set up very intelligently. They, they understood, all right, let's not over-rotate towards that 6 line. A lot of teams try to bait, bait te other teams into that 6 line and then flex around and kind of leave them pinned there in that low ground uh, where they can't really control the rest of the map. And that's something that a lot of teams struggle to do when they when they try to go over towards the east to take that cap. They, they give up everything over in the west. They, they, they give up all the map control to the other team, and, and they don't really leave any sort of way to regain the map control. Typically, what you see a lot of time is you see one light tank at one end, so yeah. they're guaranteed to have the intel, and then the other two groups are where they can support each other on the other two crossings. And when you're set up like that, uh, as the team trying to attack, all of a sudden, if you can't cap, you have no plan B. You can't rotate out without, you know, and them knowing. That. Yeah, you can't rotate out. And, and so Eclipse said, all right, well, they're going to know it. So we're just going to cross right in the middle and, and try to open it up. And it didn't really work. So overall, looking at the damage here, Letif, for the second game in a row, top on 07 at 3,700. You know, not a bad pickup. Not at all. And... Uh, you know, overall, it's working out for him. Mako's still doing 2,400. Uh, but outside of that, no one really standing out for 07. Uh, meanwhile, Brett uh, doing what the Leopard does, and that's just farm, <laughs> sit in those positions where you can just keep cranking off shots. And it hits hard. It has 390 alpha. So it's a, it's a decent gun, especially at range, uh, where you only get, you know, tiny little windows. Fairly accurate gun. Right. Uh, but the problem is, is it's not a good brawler. Uh, 1v1 versus a bad chat. A competent bat chat, chat. A competent bat chat player should win. It's um, rubbing off on you now. Yeah, just a little <laughs> bit. So, you know, overall, though, it's kind of an odd pick. Uh, did Obviously, he did a lot it of worked. damage. So well, I wouldn't, wouldn't really say it worked. I mean, he did work with the tank. Yeah, no. So, it, so you can't really fault that, but uh, not doing a lot of damage doesn't necessarily mean good for the team in a lot of si some situations. Sure. Uh, it definitely can be beneficial. Uh, however, in that sort of situation, because the Leopard being the Leopard, he couldn't really open anything up. He couldn't make some sort of push to really contribute there. And just the one bat chat sitting up in the high ground made it so he had a hard time figuring out, all right, can I commit right now? Do I have to stay back? Because he didn't want to find himself in one of those situations where a bat chat could take him on a 1v1. Right, and you even stated as well yourself that if he was to go on a 1v1 situation, uh, he would have lost that. So that is going to lead us into the second map between 07 and Eclipse. Runeberg, a mixed type map. The defending team starts the battle on the green, and the attacking team starts at the centre square of the town. Bases are located quite far from each other. Both bases are better controlled from the village when playing a heavy setup. It's better to attack the first base through the top direction with the help of several well armoured heavy tanks. For the attack on the second base, it's better to use a more mobile setup and either play through the centre or split forces. In general, the map is not easy to play on. Teams often use blind shots and risky shifting of the forces from one flank to another. It's time to get into battle number three. Looking at the lineups, 07, three 113s, two bad chats, a grill and a T-54 lightweight. Eclipse, two 113s, two 50Bs, a 215B, a TVP, and a T-54 lightweight. And right off the bat, something I noticed here is Eclipse going with a very aggressive opening play. They've moved Wallax all the way down to F7, where he can really kind of open things up and he'll have a very good vision through all these windows. And the rest of the team is taking control of the six line. They're actually playing pretty weak on the zero line, which isn't something we see a whole lot of. And it's going to make it very restrictive for 07 to move around right now. Yeah, like you said, Wallhex is indeed in a great position to get any prox lights uh, that would come from 07 pushing uh, up down, or will you say up the six line. What we see out of a lot of teams is we see a lot of split pushes moving some mediums up along the B line into towards uh, a six to open up that village. And at the same time, a group of heavies moving straight up the six line. And it opens up a crossfire uh, towards the tanks at a seven and then down the line at the six line towards uh, E6. Right. And the, the problem but with Wally being there. Wally's there, so he's going to spot everything. And the rest of the guns are kind of in a very interesting position for Eclipse. And they've actually started to rotate over towards the zero line. So maybe a little bit of a speculation there that they were going to go for some sort of F-line play, and then they were set up to, to ambush uh, a team pushing out of that middle road aggressively. Uh, something we have seen off and on over the last couple weeks, just a lot of light tanks just going straight up the F-line. Uh, and then once they realized that it wasn't coming, they've, they've moved back. They've taken control of the zero line uh, to where their guns can support Vetro, and it's actually just Vetro and that TVP that's the only eyes, really, towards 
uh, the zero line for clips. I almost feel like Eclipse has just already cut the map very small for 07 here, especially if they're going for a south play. Well, the only saving grace that 07 have is they can still rotate through the village if they want to try to open up something that way. Uh, however, Fosta is pretty much pinned into the south at this point. It looks like they're just going to fight. Warbander takes a shot to his ammo rack, so his ammo rack's already damaged. Uh, kind of surprised he hasn't repaired it. There it goes. Well, he uses his repair kit. It. When you have your am ammo rack damaged like that, uh, it'll obviously slow your reload a good bit. Uh, and then if your ammo rack gets hit even more or harder, uh, essentially what happens is the shells detonate in the ammo rack, an explosion happens inside your tank, and when there's an explosion in a confined area, it has to go somewhere, and that normally sends the turret straight up into the air oh, and ends the Nice instantly. shots on a Brett taking 12-13, about half HP already. And overall so far... 07 has done a great job to trade with Eclipse and even put the the hurt on two of their tanks being Brett and Wallhacks. Well, and Exo just constantly backing up here with that grill, trying to find some shots. Brett does get spotted, so we'll have to see if he takes another shot. Exo's just not going to fire it, though. Tigers hasn't been spotted yet, or he would have already been shot. And Brett taking another shot from Exo in that uh, grill. That's something... Uh, Kind of funny thing about it is uh, Master People said that uh, Vetro was going to be the better damage dealer, especially within those boosts. And so far, it's been Exo that's really been uh, putting out the hurt this yeah. series. Well, it is the curse that we've heard of from Master People. Uh, many other players and the captains who have been on the faceoff has alluded to that when he uh, when he would say something about Mr. Man, something bad would happen to him and his team. So maybe it's now extended to the player of Exo for 07. I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. And 07 just kind of struggling to uh, really open anything up. Now, they've done a good job getting damage onto both Wallhacks and Brett, uh, but they need to finish off those kills and really be right. able to take advantage right. of having the extra guns alive. Um, a gun alive with 1 HP is still a gun alive. It's still a gun that can do damage. And we've seen that come to, into play to haunt the enemy team. Oh, absolutely. And so far... There's still seven tanks alive for Eclipse. They need to find these kills already. And you could argue one of those tanks, sure, it's, you know, it's a tier 8 light, it, uh, being wall hacks of the T-54 lightweight, but, I mean, having Brett in a 215B, that's that's a tier 10 heavy. That's going to hurt. Uh, regardless of whether he's damaged or not, he can still get shots off. And speaking of which, Letta finding a shot on a wall hacks to clean him up. So Vetro fires three, drops his clip, and starts his reload. Uh, Letif still surviving. Now, they do have Wallhacks down finally. Uh, however, they sh they really need to try to find Brett here pretty soon. He's essentially a two-shotter, maybe a one-shotter, depending on the tank that hits him. Uh, at Exo would certainly be a one-shot uh, if he were to hit him. And it's actually going to be Mort that's going to commit down here in the zero line, and they haven't spotted these bat chats, and they could take down Mort right now. Mort is almost heading into certain death. So many shots bouncing, though. He's staying alive. In fact, he's taking minimum damage here. And Eclipse doing a really good job at punishing those bat chats. Zone Delta is almost out of there. Makos as well. And all of a sudden, Eclipse saying we're not out of this fight yet. Zone Delta one shot or Makos almost as low. Ooh, unfortunately, a shot being put into the dirt from what if? Tigers in that 113, and now Rocks not able to find the angle or the shots onto Tigers in that 113. Twenty-five seconds, though, on that cap. That's something to note. Yeah, and then they're going to force Eclipse to make a play, and HP still even with a gun lead in favor of 07. However, the Batchats have moved around into the town. They've opened this, that up. This could honestly go either way at this point, James. And there's the reset. It is going to be found, but Tigers is going to pay for it. Tigers he is goes taking down. out of the fight by Makos. Good stuff out there out of 07. A great flex. They opened up that village. However, Warbander and Letif are taking a lot of damage right now. Mort is almost dead. Vetro as well as Brett. Brett, you could argue, is a two-shotter. But T1 Diabetic now finds himself taking punishment. And this is all over the place. 07 are moments away from taking a victory on attack on Ruinberg. They're so close to this right now. They have all seven guns alive. Warbander does have a damaged ammo rack again. Uh, already burned his repair kit through the first time, so he can't repair it. 
Uh, but other than that, they're they're in a decent position. Uh, they are on a lot of tanks on low HP, uh, but they're in a pretty good position. Yeah, their highest HP tank is actually EXO in that Grill 15, and that is known to have essentially zero armor. So it's not going to be hard to find the shots to penetrate that tank, but even still, 917 will at least give him, uh, in a confrontation, one shot off, which is high alpha. Yeah, eight seconds, and the reset finally comes through. Oh, let if is so close to being taken out of the fight. Venture is going to find Zone Delta. Warbander right next to Letif. Both of these tanks are very low. A lot of damage going into these tanks. Eclipse had a lot of HP to play with, but they're just giving it away. Again, two tanks, one shot away from being taken out of the fight. Ox Mathis is going to be two shots unless Exo Six. finds him. Five they need seconds the reset. left. Are they going to find the reset? They're going to lose a tank. Or just a battle! And there it is! 07. Now, every time a tank goes down, there's a five second, second extension. Do they get the pickup on these there's, last kills? They they get it! They Holy close it out! Holy moly, they get it! That was almost a very so, bad for 07. Okay, but here's the really interesting thing for me Eclipse is 7 to 1 on defense. Now it's 7 and 2. Yeah. And, it, they, got, and they got taken to that point by none other than 07. Yeah, and 07 attacking Ruinberg, no matter who you're I would not have played. guessed that, which is why I'm pointing this out. 07, I mean, pulling out a victory. No matter who you're playing, that's not something you would expect to happen. That's. I don't know what you're doing, 07, even though I just saw exactly what you did. But I'm just saying in general, keep doing it. Whatever 07 has done to, to really start pushing the pace, I'm a fan. Yeah, and they, they always turn up to these big matches. And so far, uh, you know, looking at it, Exo in this grill doing 3,600. So for the first time tonight, let if not top on his team. Uh, however, Exo in a grill 15, 3,600 is not bad at all. And then Rox coming in at a solid 2,900. Uh, and then looking over here, Vetro and Ox, one and two. Nothing Vetro surprising and there. Exo, though, topping their team. So good stuff overall from uh, from 07. You got you to like I really their overall play. I They're agree. There. I really want to say, though, Letith, what he's bringing some sort of mojo to this team, and I like it. Well, they, they slowed it. I, I like this sort of element out of 07 where they're very systematic. They slowed it down. They realized that Brett and Wellhacks were in very isolated positions, and so they took mm -hmm. the time, almost six minutes, to find those isolations. They got Wellhacks down for almost free. It cost Letith a little bit of HP at the end. Uh, and then Exo was able to just pump a lot of shots into Brett in that uh, 215B, and that's where a majority of uh, Exo's damage actually comes from, was yeah. shooting that uh, 215B that was trying to be holed down. And once they got the two-tank lead, they were really able to capitalize on it. Uh, their bat chats were made a very sloppy push on the zero line. I was not a big fan of that. Yeah, that'll uh, agree with uh, you. They the almost one, lost them both. Yeah, the 113 driving towards some bat chats, uh, moving at a speed, especially in the low ground, it can be kind of difficult to pen that lower plate. I can kind of see it. However, more often than not, especially players like Zone Delta and Static, you would have to figure favor them to, but, to yeah, make those gonna count. they're going to find those shots, right? And so the fact they didn't, that's kind of surprising. But then the second play out of it, after they lost majority of their HP, to push into the village and open up that angle onto Tigers, and they took Tigers out for free on top of that, uh, was just, you know, three tanks that they got down for almost nothing outside of those two bat chats. So overall, it was just a great trade for yeah. uh, 07, and they managed to hang on. Uh, one thing to note, though, is every time a tank goes down, after, even after the cap circle's captured, is, is it adds five seconds to the clock. And Eclipse almost cleaned that up and came almost. back and won that. You're right. Almost. Because yeah, there was no uh, tanks left alive on cap. Yeah. And so, you know, looking at it, 07 coming in here with two 215Bs, a 113, 250Bs, a T10, and a Bat Chat AP. So oh, rather so odd tier, lineup. Tier 9 lineup here. I I'm surprised they, did, they either didn't choose t uh, two T10s or two uh, Tier 9 Bat Chats. Yeah. And then looking over at Eclipse, three 113s, 250Bs, and two Tier 9 Bats. They're just leaving that 50B of Vetro in the town by himself. So something I do want to say, though, is uh, we've actually seen this. Uh, I believe it was the Season 4 Finals uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, one of the teams capped out, but they were all very low HP. And I believe it was uh, I Love Lamp actually came in and started picking up kill after kill after kill. And they killed the whole other team. And so even though that team capped out, because they got all the kills, they still ended up winning that round after the timer, ex it, the timer expired. expired right. And that's the same thing that almost just happened there. Uh-huh. So very early pressure coming out from Eclipse as they start getting right towards that Delta Village. 
And you know what? Let's just get a listen in right now. They might be flexing a tier 9 bed right now. Yeah. T10s right here. Yeah, I got you. I'll be the veteran in a second. When you two link up, no, nice bad APs. Yeah, he's going around. Oh, we, we should. Are we have to just push on him and kill the bad AP. Can you do that together? You to make sure they don't spot me when I cross. Or one of you, maybe, just kill him. Honestly, you don't really need to. He might not be. Yeah, can this one just? Oh. Yeah, yeah, we're fine. We're I got, fine. I got spotted across. Just hold, look for Mako's shots. Fifty B. We don't have to. We're not gonna catch up. Fuck. Okay. Why didn't he get lit? Because. Nobody's lighting it. Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna die. I'm just... permanent. Alright, well, don't do that. We're fine. They're on zero, zero line. Yep, I know they are. 50B's clipping. We need to kill clipping. that bad AP. This 50B, can you come around? This 50B engage here. They're gonna push the fuck out of us because we just lost a tank for free. <sighs> so, uh, here's here's something that always surprises me about Eclipse is you see the way they play. Oh, Ox Mathis is actually on fire. That cost him way more HP. I can guarantee you that he wanted to lose. And as Zone Delta is going to come around with Exo, they're going to clean it up. So something I was uh, uh, real quick that I was just saying is is Eclipse plays so well, but again their comms, although they've cleaned it up, it seems like it's it's right back to where it was almost for us, where we were criticizing a lot. And even even Master People himself said that they need to work on their comms together. Yeah, and having lively discussion isn't necessarily a bad thing. Uh, however. Warbander gets focused out, and Rox is trying to stay alive, but those 50Bs trying to even the series up right now. Yeah, this could be a good trade coming out for Eclipse if they can just take out Rox. And that's another shot that actually bounced off his backplate. Tiger's finding Fosta, meanwhile, in the distance. Eclipse is not out of this yet, but they're not exactly in a favorable position as Zone Delta and Makos are still sitting on a healthy HP lead. Well, and this is just a matter of cleanup for 07 at this point. However, Letif does go down. Makos is on full HP in this 50B. So he can really clean up here. However, he's giving away so much of the HP for free. Oh, no. He gave up way too much. All of a sudden, this went being a very advantageous position for 07 to Eclipse about to win. I really don't like what just happened there. This was looking like it was 07's yet again. And remember, 07 are actually defending right now. Are we going to see back-to-back -back offense victories on Ruinberg, James? Well, Brett picks it up. That That's good in favor of 07, and now they can just sit back. Uh, Makos is reloading. That it, that would be very crazy to see both teams right. win on attack. Uh, on, on attack. And, and, you know, looking at it, well, the whole season, 07 only have two victories on attack uh, out of seven attempts. Uh, meanwhile, Eclipse... Oh, Tigers is falling, though. As I believe that was an HE shot. Oh, finds Exo. It is a two-on-two. Two. The HP does favor ever so slightly 07, though. And they have that 215B on full HP. And, and what I was about to say is their thing to remember is Eclipse have attacked eight times this season and won four of them. So you, you'd think that they would be the one statistically that would have the better chance of winning. Right. And right now, a bounce shot. Is Makos, is, I can't tell if he's in any position they, to support They don't know he's Delta, there. Though. He could clean this up right now. Is he going to find the shot onto Vetro? He's lining it up, and he is, but it did kill. Are you kidding me? <laughs> he is going to find it in his second shell. That is a four-round. And there it is, Makos! Coming in huge. What a play from Makos and Zone Delta. Wow. That, Woo! what a roller coaster. That that goes from 07 to yeah. about to win that very easily to throwing away multiple tanks and a lot of HP for no reason to holding on to the skin of their teeth and pulling barely pulling that out. Uh, look at, hold on, look at the score right now. Wow. So, Eclipse, you know, we were just talking before the broadcast starts about Eclipse being a lock-in for that uh, <laughs> free pass to the offline regional finals. Right. This is not the way to do that. No, not at all. They only needed four points from these last three matches to guarantee their spot, and right now they're uh, on track to get zero. Oh, re uh, regulation loss here would be not only huge for 07, but Aquaticum 60s as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, looking at it... Uh, yeah, let's take a look at the damage. It's going to be none other than Zone Delta this time, followed by Makos, the last two tanks alive for the team of 07. 
to put up 45, almost 46, and 4,300 damage. Yeah, so Zone Delta make us just putting on their backpacks and just saying, hop on, guys, and they didn't work that game. Yeah, but look, I mean... I mean, look at Vetro and Brett, though. And they were the 50 bees that got to play that got to play through the town. They got a lot of earth, uh, free damage correct, on correct. to uh, the, T the T10 and the 113. So that's where a lot of that comes from. Then on Fosta. And real quick to interrupt, 07 actually just called a timeout. And Interesting. I, th I think maybe what that could be is to kind of cool themselves down. You know, they're up 3-1 over Eclipse. Uh, maybe they're get they don't want to get too ahead of themselves. They still want to make sure that all their strategies are there and they're not just playing on pure raw emotion and uh, momentum right now. Although that is a good thing, sometimes you can get a little ahead of yourselves, especially if you're the underdog coming into a match. Yep. And one other little fancy little tidbit here. Ooh, fancy tidbits. O seven have attacked four times and have won all four attacks on Rune on uh, not Runeberg on Muravanka, which is going to be our next map. Hmm. So, Something to think about. Kind of interesting, especially since 07 have really kind of struggled this season. The fact that they this have is, a map. This is crazy. I, I don't really know what, what to say right now. And I, you could almost give this, I, and I know this isn't fair to the, the rest of the team of 07 because they're all playing great right now, but you could say the addition of Letif, for whatever reason, is just... Mm. They, they've kind of like, for the last couple of weeks, they've kind of keep showing these keep showing us these little moments of brilliance where, right. they, where you can see right. that, that there's the potential there, but then they turn around and they lose games. And once again, for the second time, they almost threw that game uh, on the yeah, last match no, day. They did. On the last match day on uh, versus Deja Vu, I think it was, on it was. Uh, Himmelsdorf. Mm -hmm. They were up by an insane amount, and then they gave away like multiple tanks for free, and then they managed to turn it around and get the win. Same thing happens here. They were up by almost 3,000 HP towards the end there with five guns still alive, and then I, I blink for a second... <laughs> And all of a sudden, they're down on HP yeah. and even on guns. And so you're just going, what's going on, guys? Like, So, you know, overall, Eclipse did a good job to punish the mistakes. So, like, some tanks getting separated uh, and a little bit lazy. And just good focus fire out of Eclipse almost pulled that back around for them. Right. And they got huge shots on the Zone Delta, who was the only full HP tank left for 07. So uh, it was it was a roller coaster, like you said. But we're just going to get right into it with the third map between 07 and Eclipse. Muravanka, a map with a great number of buildings, bushes and trees, amongst which teams hide for most of the battle. The attacking team begins the battle from the top of the village, and the defenders start from the bottom of the map. Both bases are better controlled from the hill near the first base, and from the green in the lower left corner of the map. There are many attack directions. The attacking team often attempts to gain the attention of defenders by putting pressure on the first base, whilst manoeuvring several tanks behind the second base to deliver fire into the defending's flank. Team setups are very diverse but the players often choose the fastest tanks, even for heavy setups. They could even bring SPGs. And these lineups out of 07, 357s. Okay. I don't think I've ever seen three of those. Well, well, well it's actually two. I think match, last match day we saw three. Yeah, an E5, two bad shots, and a 1390. So that's a lot of draw DPM for 07. That's a lot of firepower. Yeah. Uh, and then Eclipse coming in with an E5, five bad shots, and an RU251. So overall, very interesting stuff. M Miravanka is a map as we as we watch Tigers take on a few shots. Uh, Miravanka is a map that I've noticed being fairly new to the Gold League. Uh, we've seen different lineups for a lot of different teams, but now more so than ever, we're starting to see a very uh, auto loader heavy uh, lineup for these teams. Yeah, and so this map was played back uh, towards the later days of 754. Um, this was a very famous map between uh, I think it was L Gaming and Hellraisers uh, made the, the finals of the Global Grand Finals a couple of years ago and there was some just very intense brawls but once again that was still in there was tier 8 right. uh, when it moved to tier 10 the map definitely slowed down a bit it definitely favored the defenders a bit more because you could sit there with E5s and I7s and hold down uh, on the 3 line here and it's really been as of recent where teams have gotten found ways to kind of open these things up a bit more uh, and Another thing to note is this is the map where Eclipse dropped around to High when they, even though High were attacked yeah. down uh, because of some <laughs> the poor banter. coordination between them. The banter was amazing. So, you know, looking at it, Eclipse need to find a way to break this defense. And defense is actually one of the stronger things as well for 07. Besides just being a very impressive attacking team on this map, uh, they've played this uh, on the season. They've defended five times uh, and still won four of them. So, Mervanka is the one of the very few maps where they actually play very well. So, 
kind of sure. interesting. And if you look at a lot of the other maps for a seven, they, they don't have these same stats, but it's just Maravanka where they, they happen to play pretty well most of the time. So potentially both of our predictions could be wrong. Uh, going in favor of 07. I said 07 was going to take it in overtime. You said Eclipse would take it 5-2, which, I mean... Uh, that's already wrong. That doesn't matter. Huh? Even even if Eclipse win out the next four rounds, right. that's still wrong. So. But that's the thing. What I was going to say about your prediction was that would have been a very safe prediction to make. And right now, 07 has shattered it. Yeah, and so, you know, looking at it... 07 just kind of holding very, very still... Uh, and Eclipse trying to find what they can. They're blind firing all these bushes. They, they don't know exactly where Fosta is, but they, they just haven't been able to figure anything out. And now this is that same thing that we've talked about before from Eclipse is, all right, if we can't touch this two cap, we can't find these lights, what's our plan B? And, and a lot of times they've kind of not had enough time they've, to make an effective faltered. plan they B. They have definitely faltered. And right now... On the flip side, though, what I will say, and this is something that you talk about a lot that I agree with, is... 07 is in a good position and they have a strong defense set up, but they don't want to get too stagnant because we've seen what happens with defenses when they 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 sit complacent. The other team figures them out and they're able to open them up in in ways that you know that team's defense didn't think it would happen. Yep. So more often than not, Eclipse can win on offense. They're six and three on offense in this map right now. Uh, however, just not really showing exactly why that is right now. They haven't really been able to make any progress. Four minutes have gone away. And, and they six, haven't, only six minutes left to play with. They've only had the one shot of damage onto Warbander. Uh, other than that, they haven't really gotten any connections. Oh, and T1 Diabetic is going to find that house. Obviously, he meant to do that, and he is going to be playing a... a for those angles. So what he's doing right now is he, he backs out a little bit and then he pulls forward and he waits for three seconds. Uh, three seconds is how long uh, Six Sense actually takes to show up once he's been spotted. So what he's doing is he's backing up a little bit and then he's pulling forward and he's waiting the three seconds to see if he gets spotted. Then he's going to back up a little bit further uh, to check for a new angle. See, all right, if they're sitting in this bush, I'd, I'd be spotted right now and pull forward. He's going to see if he gets lit. All right, well, it's not this bush. And so it's this whole process of elimination of trying to figure out uh, where a passive tank could be sitting. And so for those new players, what, what exactly do you call when you play a corner like that? Uh, it's more or less it's just process of elimination there's no real term for it other than okay. that it's just a matter of all right well we know that they likely have a tank sitting passive over here so let's just find something where i know i'm gonna have cover back out a little bit all right i'm backing out far enough to where this only this bush can see me and i want to pull forward i'm gonna wait to see if my sixth sense goes off all right well i didn't get out of that time so i want to back out a little bit further and then if you know you've cleared all the bushes that you want to clear and you go all right well there's nothing here if you've done it wrong, you'll find out very soon because you'll drive into that field and find yourself on the other end of a lot of guns, and it won't be a good situation. But if you do it right, you can move it for free and find a better position. Yeah, well, as we sit here with Ox, very close to the team of 07, let's go ahead and take a listen in with the team of 07. Or it's possible that we get drawn into a really It would bad be engine, Makos, so. and Rocks, Makos and Rocks that say at the corner, Lettuce would have to be the one to rotate. Um, do you want me to rotate? Do we want to do that? Up? Yeah, I got lit. I got lit or something. Or air for it, maybe. There's a bat is on the building. Let's let it flit. Let's let it flit. I think there's a tank here, or here, somewhere there. Uh, nice, 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 nice. Good job, Did you good get job. Damage for him? Okay. We're slowing him down. We're slowing him down. All right. Because it's clipping. So, zone, zone down is fired. Zone willing like, to clip. It's four minutes. Uh, and they don't have nothing on us. All right, let's oh, focus. Yeah, when they're gonna get cap pressure finally, I think we push into the city with yep. the two with like the 57 and two bats swing city. Yeah, I agree. The other 57 I'm gonna group up with over. XO. Yeah, I'm gonna group up in, with XO. And Makos and Rocks sort of work the corner. You can probably get aggressive yeah. in the corner and get get to like the house. Not getting lit anymore. Don't just push to the buildings and clip him. Wait, wait. Okay, do we want to do this? Not yet. No, 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 no. there's no pressure. No, 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 What do you do with me? Okay. I'm concerned that if they're going to push all their beds down here. No, there's a bat north. There's a bat north. I'll see it pretty early. We'll be okay if we do that, I think. That may be yeah, him. Agree. That was like, oh, there's a bat lit in city. There's a bat lit in city. I could be permalit. I'm not looking at poking out there. I gotta say, I really like the control and the calm, right? Right, well, especially right now from is he realizes there's no reason to move. Yeah, no. Why are we pushing? Now, now there are certain situations I've talked about where being stagnant on defense is a bad thing. However, in this case, there is no this is not that. Yeah. There is no easy opening for Eclipse, and, and they clearly already have talked through. All right, well, if they do this, we have this reaction. So they're not planning to sit there for long. They're saying, all right, once this happens, we'll move. 
And Fosta finally does get lit in that bush by T1 Diabetic. And he will go down, but hopefully they can trade it out. Oh, he's going to fall to Ox Mathis. Although the, there's only 2 minutes and 35 seconds left on the clock with 50 seconds on the cap pressure for Eclipse. And they just completely annihilate they, they Vetro. They annihilated Vetro. Yeah, he's gone. And all those T57s just getting all the blind and fire on has fallen now. The damage coming on the Tigers. He's got to be careful about that. T1 Diabetic has been shot. And Ledef is going to bounce a shot off his back plate. Now Very good. lucky for him. Mox Mathis should be going down here momentarily. And there he goes. 07 could potentially bring this to a 4-1 lead over Eclipse. Warbander takes out Tigers. This is all but over. 07, what is up with you right now? Only two minutes left, and they could take down Eclipse. They are playing out of their minds. Where has this 07 been all this whole time? And T1 Diabetic goes down? Overall, just this great is play out of 07. A dominating victory for 07. The thing that is most amusing to me about this whole thing is that it could be Exo that ends up with that Boostmaster title. Warbander just trying to back away a little bit. Just Brett and Mort coming in. And a full health E5 still left alive for 07. <laughs> so Delta just ramming right into Brett. And it is now Mort in charge of taking out five tanks. Which, as much as I'd like to see it, is not going to happen. He doesn't even have it left in his clip, provided some miracle ammo racks. Uh, right. That E5 is a full clip alone. And that's only if he high rolls. He need two shot, two clips to get through there's, that E5. It's and just there's not no happening. way he can reload. It's just not happening. Even if it was just E5 alone, I, I wouldn't favor him. That's for the situation. I don't know what 07 put in their coffee this morning, but I like it and I want some. <laughs> this is this is crazy. For, look at this, four to one. And it's, it's in 07's favor. Yep. So one thing I do want to point out, though, is a little bit of a correction here. I, I said earlier that defense was one of the stronger things for 07 on this map. They're actually 1 in 4 on defense on this map. So a little correction there. Mis misstated. However, their, their attack is now 5 and 0 on, a, on, <laughs> on Ravanka. So, or no, that, that's, their attack is the strong side. The, the, the defense, right. defense, now they're 1. Excuse me. Now they are two and five on defense. You're getting all over the place. Yeah. The, the excitement is getting to you. I can see it. Yeah. So two and five on defense okay, now. Okay. And look, this is but not for me. This is not to say that that I think that 07 is a is a bad team because that's not the case at all. It's just we've been wanting to see this out of them for so long, and and like you said earlier, we've we've really started to see some moments where they would shine, and then. We've seen them falter, and falter quite poorly, unfortunately. Well, and just look at this damage spread out of the whole team. Uh, you know, Makos on top at 3,200, 3, then Zone Delta at 24, Warbander at 23, and it goes down. And everyone's really consistent except for Fosta, but look at Fosta. Spotted 5 and has 2,700 assistance points. And their thing to keep in mind is on this season, Fosta's actually number one in tanks spotted, sitting at 226 before tonight. Uh, so he's... A lack of intel is not ever the problem. No, 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 for no, no. Fosta is incredible in that he is. I think he's the best spotter right now, currently in the league. Yeah, no, he, he's number one on tank yeah. spotted. So, so that's another I mean, five tanks onto that tally just from that one round. But alone. now it just seems like 07 is doing something with that information. Yeah, and now, now here's the thing: is what I was trying to get at is 07 are four and zero on attack on Murrow. This is a, they have not lost an attack, and that defense was the one where statistically they should have dropped. Right. This this could be a five one victory for 07. And if you're sitting this here, this would be huge. If you're M60s right now, you're, you're, you're at 07. Here, you got your flags out. You got your uh, your pointy hat. Yeah, you're like you your got lips. your number you one are, glove. Yeah, oh <laughs> seven. You know the big foam fingers. I mean, they they are huge 07 fans right now because potentially they could steal a spot from Eclipse. Yeah, and looking at the lineups, a 113, a T57, a 140, a TVP, two bat chats, and a T54 lightweight. That's a very lightweight. interesting lineup. A okay. very mobile lineup. Does have the 113 and the 57. Uh, I would expect to see more towards the 3-4 line setup, and that looks like what we're going to see out of 07. Yeah, and Eclipse, I mean, they're bringing an E5 and an IS-7, so good weight there. And then we have four bat chats and a 1390. Yep, and, and a very odd split out of Eclipse. Not to say odd, but we've seen it a lot lately. Uh, they have the two heavy tanks going over towards the three line, but they're leaving their bat chats in the south. 
and Wallhax is going to come down here into the bottom corner and just to spot. I want to know where they plan on putting the IS-7 in that E5. So they're just going to play kind of passive on the 3-4 line. They're bringing those tanks so they have some weight to retake that right, one right. cap when they need to. Uh, but overall, Wallhax is just sitting in a very... I don't want to call it different bush, but just in a rather out there location. If he gets spotted, he's not going to have any uh, real retreat. However, there are no tanks over here for 07 except for Fosta, who hasn't found him yet. Uh, so he should be relatively safe. And so Eclipse need to hold on for nine minutes. And the thing is, is right now is Eclipse to get anything out of this match. They need to win three rounds straight, straight correct. which is going to include two rounds on Cliff. And Cliff is a map where we've seen anything happen. Literally anything can happen on that map. Yeah. So you got to like 07's chance to pick up one round out of the next three between this. <laughs> right, right. You know, they have not lost an attack on this map. So you got to like their chances here. And if not, Cliff, you got to think that they could find a way to pick up one yeah, of the two at rounds. Least, at least one. So one thing I want to ask is what is our overtime map for the day? It's Ghost Town, which, if you remember earlier, is a map that I said that 07 haven't played once this season. Now, that could be a good or a bad thing. Right. That, that could be a good thing. That's is that really have, worrying for me, though, for 07. That could be a good thing in the sense that they have some strats saved up and True. they're just waiting for a special True. moment. Now, that also could be a very bad thing in terms of they've never practiced it and they have absolutely right. nothing for it's, it. It's essentially, it's, it's almost like a... It's almost like a crapshoot. Like, it's either going to work or th it's going to fail horribly. Maybe we could see a repeat of uh, CD versus M60s where uh, you have CD on a map that they've never played before. That they've oh, all when season. they played uh, Proke. Yeah, they played Proke, and even Smiley Red said. <laughs> Smiley was like, I don't know what was happening. I was just calling out tanks. So maybe we'll see a repeat of that. I don't know, but you're right. Anything is possible. you got to favor Eclipse on that map, but, hey, we favored Eclipse on this entire series, and they're down. And we were wrong, so... And now that I really think about it, James, we've seen 07 take almost every team at least to overtime. So some, I wouldn't necessarily say something is drastically different here, but they've really figured something out, especially with bringing Ledef into this lineup. Yeah, and Mako's sitting here just ever so carefully to where Mort, looking opposite for him in that E5, can't find a shot. And it's actually going to take Ox to push yeah, up Ox here is pushing up. to get the prox light. He hasn't got it yet. He's trying to creep forward a little bit. He still has not even lit the T-57. Now Warbander is also set up behind Makos in that 113 as he slowly pushes over that hill, that small little deflate. He's going to back up, though. And what it looks like Eclipse are doing is they're getting ready to do a dual push. They're going to move Ox and Mort uh, up the 1-2 line, and then they're going to use the batch hats to push through the town and get into around the F line. Oh, bouncing a shot off of Ox Mathis, and Ox himself actually landing a penetration onto Makos. Now Ox is forced to push back. And now the bat shots for Eclipse are going to come back in. And the one thing, if there's anything that I don't like about the setup from the 7, is how far back the bat shots are sitting. If some sort of brawl happens into that F line, they're, they're going to take a good 10 or 20 seconds to push down and get into that divot at a F3. Uh, and if Eclipse are smart. They're just going to push straight into it. All right. Well, let's get right into a listed in with Eclipse. Over on the 57 right now. 57. Yeah. Push across. Exo shooting at me. Good. Good, good, good. Good. Nice. Keep going. Get down. Get down. TVPs are no TVPs are no good. Good, good, good. I think you're coming. Turn back up. Turn back up. Turn back up. Can we kill the 140? Just kill the 140. Just kill the 140 before it comes back. End up in the back. I'm clipping. I know, I know, I know. Keep going. Come back, come back. Let us shot once. One more shot. Let us shot Whoa. close. It's good. One shot, one forty, one shot. Let us shot three. We're up, we're up, we're up, we're up, we're up. Mort, just go a little right in. Wow. We're up two tanks. Tiger's correct. I got 25 seconds. Go to, go to I know, I know. Zone's probably going to get Mort, just poke on him. Just get right up. Zone shot once. One shot. Let has a bit less of three or two, maybe? Unless it's clipping. Bring it back on Cliff. Hey, Ledev. Cut him off. Start cutting off. <laughs> hey, Ledev. <laughs> so I got to say, the comms were much more controlled here from Eclipse. And as soon as we said all the praise we had for 07, 
uh, Eclipse poured over, as you were just explaining with those bat chats, and deleted the tanks of 07. Yeah, well, and what I was worried about there was those bat chats being too far back for 07 to where if that brawl happens, they couldn't get in there. And that's exactly, and that's exactly what ended what up happened, happening was yeah. they dumped in with those bat chats. And once they got into that F line, there was a nice isolation where they had essentially a 6v2 on those two heavy yeah. tanks. And those bat chats had, had no angles on them, so they, they had to drive in there. But at that point, once the damage is already done, they're chasing for the rest of the game, and 07 couldn't turn that back around. So, good good push there out of uh, Eclipse. Recognize the mistake and hand uh, 07 their first attacking loss on uh, Miravanka. Yeah, that's the first time they've lost. Now, this is the really interesting part, is this next map is, is either going to make, I think, or break 07. If 07 cannot find one victory on Cliff, I, I got to say this one's most likely going to go to Eclipse. Yeah, you would have to think. Uh, now, here's the thing is they still got to win three rounds. So if all, all 07 have to do is win one round right now, and this is their in regulation. Right. So they have two chances to get that done. And uh, so far, they haven't uh, done it. So well, they, they had a chance again, right there. Cliff, Cliff is... I mean, it says it right there in it. it it's a very dynamic map. So they can choose to either play it slow or they could choose to play it very fast. If 07 decides to play it a little slow, I want to say that Eclipse will kind of be privy to that. They'll be able to catch their defense off guard or figure them out, and then they'll be able to clean them up indefinitely. Now, 07, if they play it quick and they play it almost like fast and loose, they could completely blindside Eclipse. I don't, I don't, I don't really know. And looking at the damage, Ledef is going to do 1,900, and then Tigers on the opposite team, meanwhile, is going to do 3k topping it out for his team, which is... Tigers is very consistent, but I've never really seen them top the damage too often. Yeah, well, the thing is, with being a caller like that, is you can kind of pick and choose the positions where you play, and so you can put yourself in a lot of advantageous positions, especially as a caller, just right. because you, you read the map, you go, all right, well, if I go over here, and they're doing this, I'm going to have free shots, and so a lot of callers tend to find well, themselves that, in those yeah. situations. And that's also something else, though. It's, it's, very, it's very difficult, and I've talked to you and other callers... To be a caller and to be that consistent and do all all that damage all the time. Yeah, well, especially playing a tier ten, which is what Tigers prefers to do. Yeah, uh, a lot of callers, such as Fasta for 07, he plays the tier eight majority of the time. Right, because a he lot can, of callers will will go. To he the can tier go get light. the intel if he needs, but he's also not too worried about being a gun in the fight because he's only the tier eight. Now, you can argue should the tier eight be worried about doing damage? And there's all these other side conversations to have. Uh, but the other thing I wanted to point out was Makos doing zero damage in the T57. Even once that brawl started. He was focused out so quickly that he couldn't even fire off shots in the T57. He, uh, I don't. It was almost like he wasn't in the fight at all. Well, it is going to go to the next map, which, in my opinion, is going to decide what happens if this goes into overtime. Let's get right into it. Cliff, the most dynamic map in the league. Battles on Cliff always turn into desperate double-edged fights. Teams start from the same spots as they do in standard battles. The first base is located near the defender's spawn point, and the second is at the bottom of the hill. Sometimes teams split their forces and send several tanks through the 1-2 line to the left of the small hill, but usually both teams play at the center. The attacking team can send one of the tanks up to the lighthouse or behind it. Fast and quick-firing vehicles are better suited for this map, mainly medium tanks, including tanks equipped with auto this is a crucial, crucial situation that 07 finds themselves in as they bring five, excuse me, six bat shots and a tier 54 lightweight. Meanwhile, Eclipse coming in there with five bat shots, a TVP, and a RU 251. So the only difference is bringing that TVP, so gets off those clips a little well, bit faster. Then you, you could argue the 251 versus the T54. Well, yeah, certainly a T54 you'd have to figure it feel as a better brawler. They are used better at range and working ridge lines. So it just depends on how these teams decide to play. And looking at the setup here, 07 actually getting a good bit of map control. Uh, T1 Diabetic trying to make the climb up the backside of the hill. Uh, however, missed the first little bit he needs. Oddly enough, I want to say Exo, neither Exo or Vetro um, have either attempted a boost. Attempted so we a haven't, we haven't or really, solo climb. <laughs> we haven't been on any maps where you really F see that. Fair, though. fair. I'm yeah. just saying it's... It is interesting. That yeah. whole argument was almost nullified tonight. Yeah, well, I'm sure it's going to be up between the two of them as their friends, and so oh, see of course. What happens. I mean, you were the one that play we're playing. Oh, and as we say that, uh, but again, to pour back to that, you were in a game. You were playing with them the other night um, in pubs, which is where this all started. Yeah, and they were <laughs> going back and forth the whole time. It's crazy that these two have just studied the maps to the point where if you just ask them any map, if there's a boost, they know it. They and know they, it right. And they're they're doing it just for fun, essentially, which is crazy. And you know, when you get on a map yeah, like Mines. But sometimes that fun really turns into an uh, advantage that you would have in a game. Yeah, and, you know, looking at it, mines and steps to the maps, we see the solo climbs a lot. And those are two maps that we're actually not going to see tonight. 
at least out of these two teams. True. Mort getting focused down and he goes down. Wow, already Exo is gonna find him. Warbender has paid a little bit for that, but not too much. A great push there out of 07. Takes a tank down. They do lose a little bit of HP, but they take a gun off the field. And now T1 Diabetic has wandered into Fosta and Makos. Is this the victory that 07 is going to clinch? Is it going to be on offense here on Cliff? And they oh, and they take find another the Tigers. One. The focus was thought to be on T1 Diabetic, and, and Tigers is the one that gets taken out of the fight. Oh, and now Fosta is in a great position to get some damage on a T1 Diabetic. 07 Man. are five tanks away from getting a regulation win versus Eclipse. Versus Eclipse. Do you know how big this would be for 07 in terms of Do playoffs? You, not even just... Well, sure, you could. Uh, we could talk about the story of, of 07 making it much closer to playoffs and being safe, but then look at Aquatic M60s. Yeah, they're going to be just super excited right now. The chance to get into that the free pass to the online finals. Or offline finals, excuse me. They still need to finish this out. Uh, HP is in their favor by about 2,000. Uh, Exo does have a dead gunner, and Letif does have a dead commander. Uh, so Letif won't know if he gets spotted. You know what? But those tanks are still alive. They're still alive. And uh, you got to see if they can finish it out. Then they are attacking, so it is up to them to finish out this round. Fosta is actually going to come back in over from the 9 0, and we'll have to see. They will light Ox. And the RU 251, a wall hack, sneaking a shot in to Fosta from all the way downtown. Uh, that uh, That's not a bad shot. <laughs> you could argue some RNG in there, but even still, for wall hacks to find that, well done. Now, now something to look at is they do have Vetro sitting back there in the backfield. Ready to punish this any is, sort of a push. This isn't 7. quite over yet. It is an obvious lead for 07, but if they make any mistakes, as you said, Vetro sitting back there at A5, as well as some of the setups. Uh, uh, I mean, you have Brett sitting at D4. They could still punish 07. Absolutely. Very tense. Uh, it looks like a slow game right now, but this is this is actually really entertaining for me to watch because the next move or next mistake could potentially just give us the winner here. Yeah, and so right now, 07 need to figure out what their next play is going to be. And right now, it seems like it's going to be Rocks and Zone Delta pushing back down that one line. Rocks is spotted now as he moved towards... Him and Zone Delta move towards the backfield here of Eclipse. They do have still about five minutes to work with and a good advantage. You, you gotta want to give this to 07, but never count Eclipse out. That's what I've learned. They just bled a lot of HP trying to get into this Oh, but position. he found a shot on a bread and he took way too much damage falling off. And now he's down where Brox can find some shots onto him. Doing a tumble roll there is not what Brett wanted. He was in an unfav unfavorable position, though, and he had to get off that ridge as soon as possible, and that cost him 1,000 HP, over 1,000. And Letif. Ooh, good shots on the Letif. Is he going to survive? Oh, just barely. 07, just bleeding a lot of HP. Every time they get a little back from Eclipse, they give up some. Now, they still have all seven guns alive. However... Right, but, I mean, look at those tanks. Look at the damage they've sustained, whether or not it's HP or just something else entirely. Well, let it down his commander not, on top of being a one-shot. And Exo's down a gunner, so he's not going to be able to shoot as accurately. And he's sitting in a position where he needs... Well, he was sitting he in a position to, yeah. to be accurate, but he's, they're moving right now. So is making a push to go over and pour onto Ox Mathis. He is going to pay for it. But Makos, meanwhile, has found a shot onto T1 Diabetic, putting him one more shot closer to death. 
And Foster's just going to push over. They're going to go for it. Zone Delta's going to clean out Brent. And Exo is going to clean out Ox Mathis. T1 Diabetic trying to find something. But this is looking like 07's game. There are two tanks left alive. Now one's a full health TVP of Vetro. Oh, Wall Hacks. And now Vetro, Wallax had already taken a shot. This could be it, James. This could be a huge upset for the league in general. If Eclipse loses this right here, it's going to open up roads. Oh, and Wallax catching air to his doom. And that's it. Are, are you kidding me? This just opened a whole can of worms for our standings. Mark my words. That was the biggest upset of this season. Like, wow! Pinch me? Like, 07! Where have you been all season? If they played like this the whole time, they wouldn't be, be in, in this second, position. They might even be in first. I could easily argue that. Now, now, there was a little bit of misplay here and there from Eclipse, but overall, 07 were constantly in a good position. Most, most of the positions that they were in, like you said, in good position, they forced that onto Eclipse. They made them play their game. And I, I love that breakdown, and I've talked about this. Once again, this is out of Eclipse. This is something that I've been saying for <sighs> weeks now. Stagnant defenses on clips don't work. Right. And they just showed us exactly that. They did the same thing. They, they used multiple pushes. Mm -hmm. They opened up the one line. They, mm -hmm. they made the shift guns over there. Mm -hmm. Then once there were guns worried about stuff over on the one line, they were able to push over on top of the mountain. This and they, they were able to just chip away. These slow games where 07 can just kind of systematically break down these teams is where time and time again they've shown that they're a good team. They, they struggle in brawls. Don't get me wrong. That's, that's 07 to this Right now, right. that's their biggest weakness, in right. my opinion. And even still there, we saw them struggle a little bit in brawls. They've cleaned it up, uh, you know, slightly. I, if there is one criticism, I'll say this. If 07 can really clean up and tighten up those brawls, I'd say this entire league has something very credibly to worry about. And this is some of the best tanks I've ever seen out of out of this, this team. In and fact, it, no. Let, let me rephrase that. This is the best tanks I've seen out of 07. This season, at least. Yeah, no, this is just absolutely crazy. And the fact that Eclipse just lost to 07 is just... So cleanly, too, I might add. Yeah, so looking at it, you know, and just a good damage spread out of almost the whole team, except for Warbander, but he got caught out early. Uh, looking at it, Makos, XO, Rock, all doing 2K+, plus, all within 300 damage of each other. And then, and then Zone Delta at 1,500, Fosta in a T-54 lightweight at 1,200. And then it was Letif and Warbander that kind of had to be sacrificial lamps. Uh, Warbander pushed down the one line. He gave a lot of his HP to Vetro. Uh, and then Letif also gave a lot of his HP to Vetro when he uh, overextended uh, on the high ground there. Vetro was able to dump his whole clip into him. And it kind of made it hard for those two to get into the fight. But the rest of the team doing their job. Vetro, on the other hand, doing 3,600 damage. So top damage dealer per normal. Uh, and, you know, just looking down at it, Mort, Tigers, T1, Ox Mathis, just not really able to get in there. And even... Wallhax only doing a thousand in that RE251. I say only a thousand out of a tier eight, but I mean, yeah, I've come to expect a lot more out of him. Uh, and just looking at this uh, whole lineup, just a very uncharacteristic eclipse that we watched tonight. I'm still stunned. <laughs> I, I, either, either Lenef is the greatest pickup in tanks history, or they just really used him to gel together. Uh, more efficiently. Well, they, I, don't, already, <laughs> I don't know. They've already shown over the last couple match days that they were moving in the right direction. They got that win versus Deja Vu. But bringing in Letif has just kind of brought everything together. We've seen that out of other teams. And Letif has, by the way, when Get Fl I gotta say this, when Get Flanked was still in the Gold League, uh, rest in peace, my man Dwight, um, Letif was one of the more consistent players for the team. Yeah, definitely. And, and you know, this is a situation that we've seen before. Uh, high Voltage, their first season, they, they were kind of they, they were good. They had a lot of talent, but they, there was just that little thing missing. Sure. And then uh, DeKillzor kind of stepped into that lineup, and that really brought everything together. It gave them that final piece. And that for a while, their high voltage were close to unstoppable. And this is maybe the same thing we'll see out of 07 right now. Yeah. So for the very first time in this, this season's history, we're actually going to bring on both teams for the post-match interview. Uh, Meadowhawk, if I can just start with you... Um where the hell has this been, like, all season, man? I'm upset. You guys played phenomenal tonight. You're, you're obviously wet and sweaty, even though you didn't even play. Watching that or listening to comms was, was probably uh, very stressful. But where the hell have you guys been? This was beautiful. This is what I wanted to see, man. Oh, uh, it's about time. I mean, we went out on the field there, and we gave out 120%. <laughs> 
And, you know, I got to give respect to those Eclipse guys. I mean, they always give us a good fight. But, you know, R and Jesus was with us. And uh, we, we took it all the way. All the way. And, and Master People, my man, um, I mean, really, the only question, I know you, you know what's coming. What What happened? <laughs> I don't know, man. I just wish I played. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what happened. Um, communication was bad. Players were playing bad. Um, I don't know really what to tell you. To be honest, it was just O seven played well. We did not. O seven deserved the win, and we definitely did not. So sure, it's so, good that they got it. Uh, it's my, good that they got it. My follow up question to you, Master People, real quick, is uh, you know, until tonight, you guys were looking good for that second spot, making the regional finals in the oh. bye. You know, that's still something you guys aren't guaranteed. Is that going to start creeping in on the next couple match days? Is that going to become a worry for you guys? Uh, I feel like that's part of why we lost tonight. I think uh, people are starting to feel like we've already made it into Burbank and that our our roster can just, you know, cut right through any team in the league. But, I mean, as shown tonight, 07 proved us wrong and showed us that, you know, something actually has to, you know, be fixed or changed or it's it's not going to. Not going to go as well as we were hoping for. Yep. Now, Meadowhawk, uh, i got to ask you this. So, you know, we were just talking. You guys brought in Letif during the roster change this How weekend. Does he have to drink? So, over the last... If, if, you're, if you're not sweating when you're not playing, you're not doing it right, Master People. So, my, my question to you, Meadowhawk, is uh, you guys have definitely been playing a lot better as of the last couple match days. You got that overtime win versus Deja Vu, and now you, you beat Eclipse. What have you guys kind of been doing that's kind of led to this change in format of you guys? Uh, I think it's just a more communication. I mean, the guys in the locker room, you know, we're, we're finally seeing eye to eye as opposed to talking over to each other. Um, it's kind of helped with our reaction times. We got caught out a couple times there on Murrow, but, you know, things don't work out every time, but you got to push through. Is, is that a cut on your left cheek? Oh, no, that's your hair. Sorry. I thought I didn't know how intense. Oh, no. Oh, no. I, 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 I hit my face on the keyboard. I mean, it was, it was, it was a real good match. So, so did you, like, uh, hurt anything else, break a leg or something while you are playing? Yeah, I tripped over my mouse cord, my power cord. I broke my foot. Uh, I'm hoping it's not going to affect my play, but we'll see how the team doctors deal with that. All right. Well, Master People, again, I hope uh, things work out better for you guys. Uh, your next match, obviously dropping games now is, is not what you want, but I know Eclipse is a strong team. And then to you, Meadowhawk07, it's, it's about time. Thank you for showing us what you guys are truly capable of. You're welcome. And there it is again, Master Pupil talking about communication.